Had Aisha reached puberty when the Prophet of Islam had sex with her? The answer is no. Aisha was still young enough to play with dolls when Muhammad took her to his marriage bed. You know, so far we've covered a number of topics and I'm sure uh, if you've watched them, you'll find them to be very disturbing. And the question that we are going to ask, not just ourselves, but ask even you as viewers to wrestle with is the claim that Aisha basically was at the age of puberty or reached the age of puberty when this consummation of marriage happened. So the question is, had Aisha reached puberty? And of course, with me here in studio is our, our dear brother, Dr. David Wood, to answer this question. David, you hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. Aisha, yeah, was young, but she reached the age of puberty as if that's a justification for the consummation of the marriage. Yeah, he, here we could do an, uh, what's called an even if, but in fact response. That's where you say, even if you were correct, um, then it's still a problem. But in fact, you're wrong, right? So here we can say, even if Aisha had reached puberty, um, it would still be a problem because just because a girl reaches the age of puberty doesn't mean that it's a good idea to start having sex with her. It's a, it's a good idea to wait until she has finished puberty, i.e. wait until she has the body of a grown woman, because that's when it's far safer to, uh, for the girl to start having um, children. Um, so even if Muhammad had waited until Aisha reached puberty. Um, it would still not be a good idea if she was only nine years old. Uh, but in fact, according to the Muslim sources, she hadn't reached puberty. And so what we find, what we really find from Muslims is, you know, what we, talk, what we talked about um, previously is that the Muslim sources say over and over again, like a beating drum, that she was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage uh, with her. And the reason we go through the Muslim sources to show that is Muslims who are embarrassed about this want to deny, first of all, that she was nine. No, she was much older. And so once you prove conclusively that she was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage, then they want to change the response to, oh, okay, she was nine, but she had reached puberty. But she had reached puberty. And so, um, they're really looking for ways, different ways to justify what Muhammad did. But we're going to read a few Muslim sources, and there are issues you can go into a lot more depth, a lot more uh, detail. Uh, but we're just going to give a simple reason, according to the Muslim sources, and according to the greatest Hadith scholar of all time, um, for concluding that Aisha had not reached puberty mm -hmm. when Muhammad had sex with her. So let's go ahead and read a couple of sources. One, just a simple, a simple passage to start off, just saying that she was six years old when she was married and then uh, nine when the marriage was, cons uh, was consummated. So Sahih al-Bukhari 5158 narrated Urwa, the prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years i.e. till his death. So most of the passages on the age of Aisha are like this. They give the, they, they give the age of uh, the marriage. They give the age uh, when he consummated the marriage. And some of them give um, the timeline of when, uh, how old she was when he died. So this is where uh, Muslims will look at passages like this and say, aha, yes, it says she was nine, but she had reached puberty. And the, the basis for this is, is their thought that, well, he married her when she was six and consummated when she was nine. So he must have been waiting for something. What was he waiting for? Aha, he was obviously waiting until she reached puberty. Not so fast. There's more to it than this. So let's go ahead and read another passage. Sahih al-Bukhari. And here we have some interesting added commentary from Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, considered uh, by many to be the greatest Hadith scholar of all time. That's right. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 6130, narrated Aisha, I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the prophet would call them to join and play with me. 
So just to recap here, um, Aisha would be playing with dolls and her friends would be playing with dolls with her and then Muhammad would be there and so her friends would uh, try to hide. They don't want to be be playing with dolls when the when Muhammad is there and he would say, no, 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 come back and, and play with the dolls with Aisha. Now, there's a problem here. There's a problem and the problem is uh, that if you're a Muslim, you're not supposed to be playing with dolls. Dolls are considered images and you're not allowed to have mm -hmm. images. So why was Aisha allowed to play with dolls in the presence of Muhammad? And why were her friends allowed to play with dolls, which are images, according to Islam? So they're forbidden. You're not allowed to play with images. Why were they allowed to do this? And we have the answer right here in the same passage. We have the commentary from uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Notice he says, the playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. And this is Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani who did commentaries on Sahih Bukhari basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they include the reason they include that there is because any Muslim who's, who's reading that would go, what? what? Why is she? Why is she playing with dolls when images are forbidden? So they include that to, to solve the mystery. Um, little girls were allowed to play with dolls. It's once you reach the age of puberty, that was considered the age of moral accountability where you're responsible for your actions. And since she hadn't reached puberty, um, she was allowed to consider, she was allowed con to continue playing with dolls. So the rule in Islam isn't that you can never play with dolls. The rule is once you reach the age of puberty, you have to stop playing with dolls. But notice, Aisha and her friends are still playing with dolls in Muhammad's presence. What does that mean? Well, according to the greatest Hadith scholar of all time, it means she and her friends had not reached puberty. They were still little girls. Now, the objection I've seen Muslims raise here is, well, maybe maybe this is talking about some earlier stage mm, yes. when Aisha was much younger. But notice we've got a problem here. Let's go back to a, a, a passage from Sahih Muslim that we read uh, in a previous video. So this is Sahih Muslim 3311. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine and her dolls were with her. And when he, the Holy Prophet died, she was 18 years old. So she was still playing with dolls. She still right. had dolls. She still brought dolls to Muhammad's house. This isn't talking some, about something three or four or five years earlier. Aisha was still playing with dolls with her friends in the presence of Muhammad after the marriage had been consummated. What does that mean according to Ibn Hajar al Asqalani? It means she hadn't reached puberty. That's that's the explanation according to Islam. You're not allowed to play with dolls once you've reached puberty. Aisha was still playing with dolls. She was still playing with dolls when she was brought to Muhammad to consummate the marriage. What do you do? Why was she allowed to continue playing? Because she hadn't reached puberty. That's the conclusion. And you can see in other why this makes sense of other passages in Sahih al-Bukhari. So let's go ahead and read one more. Um, which we've read previously, but notice uh, how all of this ties together. Giving, so we'll read the chapter heading here. Giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. So the chap, this chapter is about giving children in marriage and saying it's okay. And you have two reasons. One, it says, by virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, so no monthly menstrual cycle, i.e. they are still immature, Surah 65, verse 4. This is talking about marrying and divorcing girls who have no monthly period because they are immature. They do not, uh, they, they haven't reached the age of puberty. It says the idda for the girl, the idda is the waiting period after you've divorced her. The idda for the girl before puberty is three months in the above verse. So this is Imam Bukhari commenting on the Quran saying that you uh, can divorce a girl and that she has to wait three months after you divorced her before she can marry again. And it specifically says it's a girl who hasn't reached puberty. It's before puberty. And then as the, the other example besides the Quran saying it, 
Bukhari gives Sahih al Bukhari 5133 narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e., till his death. Yes. And so what we find is that that saying, hey, my dolls were, were with me, or saying her dolls were with her, is kind of a slang for saying she was still prepubescent. That's what they're saying. Like, like, what, like of all, all the things you could bring up, why are they bringing up, oh, and her dolls are with her? Like, I mean, you know, her blanket was with her. Why, why, aren't you, why, aren't you, why are you pointing out the dolls? Because it's, it's the point being made is that she had not reached puberty, and that's why she was still playing with dolls. And so the Muslim sources are telling us that Aisha had not reached puberty. Exactly. I mean, you wonder why are they insistent to mention things like this, the dolls, right, and taking the dolls with her, playing with her friends with dolls, uh, her age, uh, specifically how long he lived with her. Uh, and of course, you and I know that uh, even some Muslims will say, oh, it's a miracle from God that he married someone this young, you know, and she stayed with him for that long because look what happened. God used her later to narrate hadith and teach and so on and so forth. So you have both sides of the aisle and it depends uh, on the time of day, I guess. Uh, you mm -hmm. know how they're going to respond to this argument. So thank you again. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. Hopefully everyone is enjoying this. Well, um, if you think this is uh, disturbing, if they, you think this is powerful, wait until you see uh, the rest of the subtitles and the rest of the subtopics that we are going to be covering in relationship to this particular important topic known as Aisha and Muhammad. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. This is Al Fadi. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sira International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.